Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today I'm diving into a brand new Marvel storyline, and no, this is not a part of the Marvel and DC fan fiction universe that I've created with multiple storylines. You can go check that out after this though. With the help of Cosplay Dude 637, I have came up with a brand new Marvel storyline. And sometimes when you're a writer like myself, sometimes writing a new story comes in handy, but sometimes you just need to put your new ideas out there. So this is a brand new Marvel storyline, a new take on the Avengers, and hopefully something that you guys will enjoy. So let's dive in. The Avengers, Earth's Last Alliance, Chapter 1, The Rescue Mission. The Quinjet hovered over the snow-covered Russian forest. The Hydra laboratory was a few miles south. Sam Wilson, also known as Captain America, was the only person sat in the hangar. He stood up and grabbed his vibranium shield and placed it on his back. When the hangar door opened, Sam strapped up his goggles over his face. Then he ran, jumped out of the Quinjet, and fell down through the air. The cold breeze stung his face when suddenly his... Metallic wings popped open and Captain America took flight. He flew towards the Hydra Laboratory. The building was a old castle, surrounded by a rather large brick wall and covered in Hydra soldiers. The east corner and the west corner of the wall had two pillars, with snipers nested inside with rather large sniper rifles. Captain America flew towards the east corner and entered the room. As he landed in... The room, his wings folded back in as he rolled across the ground and glass rained across the floor. He grabbed his shield and threw it at the sniper. The impact of the shield knocked the Hydra soldier into the wall. The door swung open and a guard ran in and aimed his rifle. The shield bounced off the wall and Captain America caught it just in time to cover his face with it and covering himself from the incoming rifle fire. Captain America ran forward as the bullets bounced off his shield. Then the firing stopped as the rifle finally ran out of bullets. Captain America swung his shield and smacked the guard with it. Then he rammed his fist into the guard's stomach, knocking the wind out of him. Then he spun around and once again slammed his shield against the man's head, knocking the guard out. Then the sniper stood up slowly. Captain America ran at him as he ran at Captain America, pulling out a knife. He went for a swing, but Captain America raised his shield up and hit the sniper then he flipped the sniper overhead making him crash on the floor behind him he then walked over to the massive sniper rifle and slammed his shield into it breaking it he then pressed his communicator in his ear east tower taken out spidey you're up Captain america ordered i read you loud and clear spider-man whispered in the west wing miles rallis also known as spider-man was hung upside down on a web invisible to the naked eye the sniper was peering down his scope, and Spider-Man let go of his web, landing on the ground quietly. He tiptoed up to the sniper and shot a web which hit the man's head, and Spider-Man pulled the sniper towards him. He then jumped up, swinging his foot out, kicking the guy in the head, knocking him out. He then became visible. He walked up to the sniper and placed a web on him, sticking him to the floor. He then walked up to the big rifle, placed his hand on it, and a surge of bioelectricity, also known as Venom, went through it. Then the big sniper rifle started sparking and smoking, rendering it useless. Spider-Man then jumped out of the window and shot a web, and swung up to the east wing, landing on the window ledge. Sniper down, boss. Now what? Spider-Man asked. Now the radio tower, which is on top of the hill due west, which is Riri's job, Captain America replied. Riri, you're up. Get that radio tower out of commission, Captain America said into his comms. I'm on it, boss man. No sweat, Riri replied. Riri Williams, also known as Ironheart, flew through the air in her Iron Man-like suit. She flew over the radio tower. She landed on the ground and aimed her wrist. The wrist part of the suit opened up and a small rocket extended out and Ironheart took aim. The rocket fired off and hit the tower. The tower exploded and collapsed. Ironheart chuckled as she took flight once again. She flew down to the laboratory, landing on the wall as Spider-Man and Captain America walked up to her. Her faceplate retracted, revealing her face. What's up, boys? She said with a grin. In about 30 seconds, every single soldier in that castle is going to be out here fighting to protect their hostage, Captain America stated. 
Let me guess, you're gonna call in the big guns, Spider-Man assumed. Captain America nodded. Jane, you're up. Give him hell, Captain America said into his comms. A nice, chilled blue sky suddenly was filled with black, thunderous clouds, and a blast of lightning hit the ground, and from the aftermath stood Jane Foster, also known as Thor. She gripped onto Mjolnir and started spinning it in rapid motion. Then she threw it at the front gate. Mjolnir ripped through the front gate and rammed into the castle, causing a gigantic hole. Thor held out her hand and Mjolnir floated up and flew back to Thor. She caught it and then all the Hydra soldiers started climbing out of the big hole that was made and ran into the snow. Guns started firing at Thor. Ironheart, help Thor out whilst me and Spider-Man find our target, Captain America ordered. On it, Ironheart nodded. Her faceplate shifted back over her face and then she took flight and headed down to the field of snow. She landed and aimed her repulsors and fired her repulsor beams at two of the incoming soldiers. Thor jumped up and landed on the ground. She slammed Mjolnir on the ground and a surge of lightning rippled through the snow, electrocuting a few of the soldiers. Spider-Man and Captain America jumped through the big hole that Mjolnir made and ran through the corridors, taking out any rogue soldiers running around. They ran further down deeper into the castle, until they found a rather large metal door. Spider-Man shot a couple webs and with a big hard yank, the doors were pulled open. They ran into the room and was met with a young man strapped to a metal bed, and three scientists stood there in shock. Put the syringe down, Captain America ordered. One of the scientists picked up a rather large knife, but Spider-Man shot a web sticking the scientist's hand to a metal desk. You cannot take him. He is ours, the scientist barked. He is not your property. He is a goddamn human being, Captain America roared. Spider-Man looked at the unconscious man laying on the bed. He checked the computer screen that sat next to him. Yeah, they pumped him with enough tranquilizer to knock out the Hulk, Spider-Man told Captain America. I'll carry him. Captain America sighed. He placed his shield on his back, then he unplugged the wires and picked up the unconscious man. Come on, let's get out of here, Spider-Man said. Spider-Man led Captain America back the way they came, and they climbed out of the castle. Spider-Man jumped up and shot a web, pulling himself into the air, and then he shot a web and pulled a soldier into the air with him and punched him in the face, smacking him back into the snow. Jarvis, bring the Quinjet, Captain America said into his comms. On the way, sir. The AI said, then the Quinjet came flying down. Thor spun Mjolnir in front of her, creating a twist of blasting several soldiers away. Ironheart blasted two more soldiers down, then her shoulder pads opened up and sent out a rocket barrage which blanketed the snowfield in explosives. The Quinjet landed and the hangar doors opened, Captain America carried the unconscious individual onto the Quinjet, Spider-Man webbed down a soldier, then web-zipped onto the Quinjet as well. Thor and Ironheart climbed onto the Quinjet as it slowly started taking off. Jarvis, get us out of here now, Captain America ordered. Right away, sir. Jarvis replied. Then the autopiloted Quinjet lifted off and flew away, leaving the snowy forest and the Hydra laboratory behind. My name is Rosfa, also known as the Banker. My name is feared by many universes. And now, I'm currently working on destroying Universe 19. No Ultra Rangers, Power Rangers Cyber Force, Sky Force. Oh, even those common riders. And those pesky beetle troopers. Nothing can get in my way. If you want to hear me, destroying Power Rangers Universe 19, well, you can listen on the podcast and watch my Evil Excellence Destroy those dumb enough to face me on the Power Rangers Universe 19 podcast. Come listen if you dare. Our close woke up and looked around rather confused. 
Last thing he remembered was a dark room with men in white jackets pinning him down and injecting him with something. He was now in a room with a bed, a table, a wardrobe, and one side of the room was just all windows. He climbed out of the bed, his leg felt solid, he walked over to the balcony door and slid it open. He then walked out onto the balcony and looked out and saw New York City below him. Where the hell am I? Our close muttered to himself. Then he turned back and walked into the room. Maybe I could answer that, a voice said. Whoa, who said that? Oculus gasped. My name is Jarvis. I am the assistant AI for the Avengers Tower and its residents. The voice replied. Avengers Tower? Oculus said with a, a drop draw. Then suddenly the door to his room opened. You are not a prisoner here. You may walk about freely. Jarvis told him. Oculus walked out of the room and cautiously ventured through the corridor, till he started hearing voices. He peered around the corner and saw an African-American male, an African-American female, an Hispanic male, and a Caucasian female, all stood around a holographic table. Then they all spotted Oculus stood there. Jarvis had introduced them as Sam Wilson, Mars Morales, Riri Williams, and Jane Foster. Nice to meet you, son, Sam said, holding out his hand. You too, Oculus nodded. So, Oculus, huh? I'm assuming you actually have a name, Miles chuckled. Yeah, Onyx Osborne, Oculus said with a chuckle. Dude, you've been out here like 28 hours. <laughs> Heavy sleeper much, Riri told him. Oculus shrugged. Is this actually Avengers Tower? Oculus asked. Yeah, man, we're the Avengers, Sam grinned. Whoa, you do realise I'm a total stranger, right? Oculus stated. It's okay, we know Gambit. Sam replied. Okay, that makes a bit more sense now. Oculus nodded. Oculus, do you know why Hydro would want to kidnap you? Jane asked him sternly. Well, I am a mutant. I have a power, but I'm still learning how to use it. Oculus explained. That is why Gambit and you two meet every two Thursdays. Jane asked. Yeah, how'd you know about that? Oculus asked back. He gave us the mission to rescue you. He came to us worried after you didn't show up for your training the other day. He also did his homework. He figured out Hydra snagged you, Miles told him. Yeah, Gambit and me are connect day, Arklow said with a weak grin. Uh, connect day? Riri said with a questionable head tilt. It's French for connected. He's always said it, Arklow shrugged. So, Green Goblin is attacking the police station? Jarvis told the room. Well, I guess that's my cue. Miles sighed. Hey, how about I join you? Jane told him. Sure, Miles nodded. Then Miles and Jane said their farewells and left the room. With a few moments, Oclo saw Spider-Man and Thor traversing away from the building. Wait, Miles is Spider-Man and Jane is Thor? Oclo gasped. Yeah, I'm Ironheart and Sam is our fierce leader. One and only Captain America, Riri told him. Whoa, that's insane, Oclo grinned. Um, second Captain America. Sam pointed out, then he pulled out his phone and checked it. He then looked up at Riri and Oculus. Hey Riri, can you show Oculus his room please? I'll be back shortly, Sam said. He nodded at Oculus and left the room. Wait, I have a bedroom? Oculus asked in confusion. Riri nodded with a small smile, then gestured for him to follow her. She led him out of the room and walked down the corridor. Then they stopped at a door and it slid open and they both walked in. I'm just across the uh, away over there, you know. Across the hall. If you ever need anything, Riri said to him awkwardly. Oculus walked around the room. It was cosy and warm. In the corner was a mannequin with a yellow and black suit on it. On the shoulder pad was the Avengers logo. What's this? Oculus asked as he walked up to it. Oh, that's your suit. If you want to use it, that is. Gambit got it the other day. It's one of the old X-Men suits. He scrubbed off the X-Men logo, though. Miles painted over the Avengers logo on it, Riri explained. You want me to be a part of the team? Oculus muttered as he ran his hand over the suit. I mean, if you want to. You want to do good, right? It's why you started training, Riri replied. You know, I grew up in the foster system. I never knew my parents. No one ever adopted me. I got by because people gave me pity. But one day, I woke up and I was floating. Over the years, I realised I'm a mutant and whenever my eyes change colour, they change to green and I could fly. I thought maybe I could be like Iron Man or Captain Marvel or Rogue or Storm or the Human Torch. They flew in and saved the day, you know. I practiced but I kept failing till one day I did a really dumb stunt and Gambit actually found me. 
He called me a jackass within five minutes. It was the first time I felt like I had a friend. Someone who saw me for me. Gambit is my best friend. I want to be a symbol for those who don't have anyone like he was for me. I want to be someone's Gambit, you know? I can't do that without putting myself out there and not trying, Ocklose explained. I think that's pretty cool, Riri said to him with a grin. Ocklose sat down on his new bed and looked around. Look, I gotta go tinker in my suit. Jarvis is around 24-7 and the kitchen has literally everything. So if you need me, I'm three doors over there, Riri said, pointing behind her. And then a clap of her hands. Ocklose nodded and Riri walked out of her room, leaving him to his own thoughts. He wanted to know why Hydra was after him. He really wanted to see Gambit and he looked at his new suit with a smile on his face. Life seems to be picking up, won't you say, Mom? Ocklose said to the empty room. This story is connected to cosplay dude 637's The X-Men storyline, found here on Tiger Tales, so make sure you go check that out as well. And now, for the outro. This podcast is a production of the Three Ranger Bros Studios, in association with Zio to Hero the Podcast. And there we have it guys, thank you very much for listening to this story. If you've enjoyed this story, then you might want to check out all of my Tiger Tales channels. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. There's Tiger Tales, the first and the original. This is a place where you'll find stories and fan fictions, diving into all sorts of fandoms, including Power Rangers, Pokemon, The Walking Dead, Marvel, DC, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and so, so much more. Tiger Tales The Lost Stories follows the same suit, but all the stories on that channel are in the first person perspective. Then there's Tiger Tales Game Over, a channel where all of the storylines are related to video games in some way or another. Then we have Tiger Tales X, where I write official crossovers. Crossovers that aren't needed, but are very wanted, and t- crossovers I thought might work. Then, of course, we have Tiger Tales Mysterious Origins. This is the YouTube channel dedicated to my own original stories. All the stories on this channel are original and my own, and it also answers questions on certain characters throughout my stories like William Cranston, Mr. Pocket, and Ace from The Color Matrix. If you've enjoyed these storylines, then please make sure you check out the following podcasts. Storytime with Cosplay Dude 637 Power Rangers Universe 19 Sailor Moon E and The Order and make sure you check out two YouTube channels Nostalgia Time and the One Piece Audio Drama they are all written and read to you and edited by Cosmic Dude 637 my Paramatai and best friend then make sure you check out the podcast Nerds Through Comics which is directed by Mark the Red Cornish Ranger this is where he adapts comic books into audio dramas and also uploads his own original Power Ranger storylines. We are the Three Ranger Bros Studios, a collaborative project, and we are all voice actors and helpers of each other's stuff, so make sure you go check us out. We're in association with the Zeo to Hero podcast, so a huge shout out to Billy and Jim, the co-hosts, and of course the podcast and the community that they lead. If we're shouting out podcasts, I have to shout out Jared, the host of If You Give It Down a Podcast. Make sure you check it out because he interviews some fantastic guests from wrestlers to voice actors and the such. And of course, if we're talking podcasts, I have to mention my own, the Tiger Nexus podcast, where I interview content creators and geeks alike. A huge shout out to all my supporters and followers, my voice actors, the people who co-write my chapters and the sorts. So huge thank you and of course, a big shout out to Agram. Uh, specifically him because he helps me a lot with some of my stories specifically the color matrix and the chapters that go on tiger tales game over thank you very much guys for listening now don't forget to subscribe to the channels like the videos and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below with that being said i shall see you guys in the next one that before we can Don't touch my Pringles.